Okay, hello traders. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Tuesday, September 25th. Uh, Mike Boutros here with you this morning. Jay, yeah, good morning to you. Mark, Marco, Mark, Peter, and Peter and Pete are here. Hey, Ty, great to see you in the room. Iman, always a pleasure. Every day, improvement every day, slow, steady improvement. It's going to be a long recovery, Iman, but thank you. Um, so, we have the FOMC on tap tomorrow. Markets are certain, starting to fall into this pre-FOMC lull. I was talking to Jay Ott earlier ahead of the webinar, but um, there are some things that we want to pay attention to. As far as fresh positioning, guys, I do just want to stress, you know, we have last three days, so last four days of the month, you have major event risk on tap, you have FOMC rate decisions by, uh, or you have rate decisions by the FOMC, RBNZ tonight. Um, so there's just a lot on tap. Aside from that, you have a host of central bank communications on tap this week. Here's a quick chart um, from our affiliate uh, IDO search. So, um, or excuse me, this is uh, Prattle. So do take a, a quick look at this and know the times that these guys are speaking. Just, you know, the, the propensity for them to make just little stupid reactions or little uh, spikes in intraday price action, specifically heading into the end of the month and the end of the quarter, just not a you know, not the ideal time to get really aggressive on intraday positioning. So remember the um, environment that we're trading in, know the event risk that's on tap. As far as the FOMC is concerned, look, you know, we'll go over all the dollar crosses today. There's no webinar tomorrow, guys. I'll have um, off tomorrow, but uh, we'll be back on Thursday. So I'm going to give you a quick wrap up of all the dollar crosses today and where we stand. Um, interest rate expectations are pretty solidified. Okay, there's nothing that the market is going to move on based on the hike that we're going to get tomorrow of 25 basis points, 94% priced in. Uh, guess what? So is December. Okay, December is a little bit over 80, uh, right around 80, I should say, a little over 80 uh, as far as expectations for the December hike. That's the four hikes the dot plot showed, okay, all year long. The question becomes 2019. And certainly, one thing that you always want to take into account, guys, is more important than what the actual dot plot is showing. The main thing that you want to remember is markets are looking for confirmation on the terminal rate of interest rates because the pace that we're moving right now leaves basically the markets are pricing in uh, two hikes more next year. Uh, is that two or three is the question that starts to shift the markets because two hikes essentially starts to get us really close to the terminal rate as uh, forecasted by the Fed. Bear with me one second. So here is the Fed's previous projection, okay? This is the um, uh, March, or excuse me, this was the June uh, projection. You can see the dot plot here showing the terminal rate basically at three, two and three quarters to three. So based on where we are right now, we're gonna get two to two and a quarter if we get that next hike. Um, you know, the, the main focus will be what the forward guidance looks like for the terminal rate. So as soon as you bring up this chart tomorrow, the first thing I'll be looking at is where the terminal rate, where the majority, uh, the mean average is for Fed members seeing rates on the whole. Um, and that should give us uh, some more guidance on the interest rate dot plot. Again, we'll be looking also for the um, expectations specifically with regards to the core inflation, personal consumption expenditure, PCE, the Fed's preferred inflationary gauge. Guys, we get a print of this on Friday. So we have another update on current PCE inflation here in the US. Um, heading to the close of the week and the close of the month and the close of the quarter. So I really can't stress enough. Uh, do expect further volatility, uh, specifically as you head into the thin markets uh, for the mar for the quarter close. So it's all about what we're doing in, in, in 2019 and what the terminal rate is at. And again, here's the 2019 projections as they stand right now. Uh, really, the main focus is uh, two and a quarter to three and a quarter, two and three quarters two and three quarters, excuse me, 2.75 into three and a quarters where the majority uh, of Fed members see uh, next year. Okay, that's two to three hikes max. So we're gonna have to see what the Fed gives us. That said, where is current price action? Again, don't forget the RBNZ is on tap um, tomorrow as well. Here's what we look like on the DXY. The focus to start the week, if you guys remember from the update, um, was really looking for so the DXY update. Was really looking for a little bit more of a correction higher, 
okay? A little bit more of a, of a reprieve, if you will, from the decline to get that last shot to the downside. Remembering and keeping in mind that we actually rallied from a pretty interesting area. 2016 low day close, okay, it was back on April, or was that May of 2016, decent pivot in price, converges, just pips away from the 38.2 retracement of this year's range and the median line. So this is the spot, excuse me, 93.65, this is the spot that DXY needs to break to get resumption of the downtrend. And you're looking for that 52 week uh, moving average. More importantly, 92.28, 92.62, 50 range of the yearly trade and the 2018 open. So the, the levels are clear, and for all of the majors, guys, the weekly charts are actually really, really clean. Intraday, things are starting to get weird. Here's the weekly open uh, on a 240-minute chart, even if you look on a 120. But the point being, you know, you have a set weekly opening range so far. I don't like the fact that it's kind of straddling the level that we're watching. But the ideal play for me would have been to look for a rally into one of these levels to short um, – early in the week. Now, the event risk is on tap. Again, I'm not going to get stubborn and try to snuff this out with anything really aggressive. That being said, I still think the, the possibility is for sort of a ramp higher before resumption to the downside. Um, remember, the reason this Fed uh, policy meeting and specifically the presser with Jerome Powell is going to be important is because the data has continued to show uh, a slowly but bettering um, inflationary picture. Obviously, the labor force participation in general uh, has been pretty strong. Uh, markets continue to rip higher. And I just wanted to take a minute and read to you a little research piece that we got from Prattle this morning uh, based on what their expectation is for the Fed. So bear with me, guys. Just some background information here. Uh, it reads as follows. It says, Fed policymakers are likely to hike rates 25 basis points for the third time this year during their policy meeting this week. Despite continuing trade tensions, the U.S. labor markets remain tight, inflation is slowly rising, GDP growth has been strengthening in recent quarters, and the Fed sentiment has been rising. These positive signals provide Fed policymakers plenty of cover to hike rates, even as the president has stated preferences that rates remain low. Moreover, continuing economic strength, even at this late stage in the economic cycle, suggests the policymakers may provide a revised rate path forecast, indicating that a fourth 2018 rate hike is now the, ten the central tendency. Jay Powell is likely to provide context to his, right, uh, to his hike, excuse me, and a possible additional hike this year in the press conference to follow. The only other policymaker set to speak this week is New York Fed President John Williams, who will likely also suggest that an additional hike before year end may be warranted. And like I said, guys, that's pretty much, even that concept that they're laying out is pretty much uh, a moot point. Why? Well, because like I said, Fed fund futures are already at above 80% for your December hike, and that's the fourth hike. So anyone who's going to try to say that the dollar is going to rally based on interest rate expectations, unless we get a material shift in that dot plot or an increase in the terminal rate, uh, I don't think that's going to be the play. So we'll be looking for information on that. We'll be looking for information on the PCE and where they see inflation going moving forward. Ideal scenario. Again, this is just, you know, possibilities, right? Uh, if the dollar does jackknife higher, you're still looking for resistance into slope resistance or resistance into um, basic trend line, basic slope. So this is just a, a pivot I'll be watching here at 94.61. It happens to be the exact 100-day moving average right here. So that would be the first area of resistance I'd look for. But uh, even if we were to move back into the upper parallel, okay, 94, 90, still my line in the sand. That's the bearish invalidation for the broader downtrend in DXY. So areas of interest to possibly fade a strength or a rally in the dollar. Downside targets have remained unchanged the last couple of days, okay? 93.65 is a 38.2 retracement. That's what you're looking at here um, on the weekly chart, 93.65. That's the break that would unleash the next leg lower. Um, basically looking for 93.19 at that point. You have some slope here around 93.50, but this is real the next major leg lower. So look, you know, again, the pre FOMC lull. Um, you're heading to thin market conditions. Things are likely to kind of move laterally and boring over the next 48 hours until we get into that release. So I guess it's about 24 hours, a little over 24 hours from now. Um, 
so don't get caught up. You know, it's not a time to get really heavy. Uh, I wouldn't tell you to stay away and not and not trade, but if you do take any position, just make sure that your uh, leverage is adjusted accordingly uh, to the fact of the environment that we're trading in. Any questions on DXY? All right, that is number one. Number two, Euro. So let's take a look at yesterday's update. So for Euro, here's what we were looking at last night. Um, so to start the week, we were talking about this region right here, 117.80 into 117.90. Um, this pitchfork looked kind of all right. You had that median line touch first there. A parallel caught those lows last week. The median line on that stretch yesterday, perfect resistance before pulling lower. So again, for me, the trade is still to look for kind of the dip to buy. Um, we rebounded an overnight trade. Here's what it looks like now. Just give you the picture. We rebounded um, an overnight trade right off the same level, okay, that we were watching, 1733. There it was. So, um, you know, I got, st I got, I was in a short here. I got take, taken out at, at break even, so I couldn't get any position on it. Uh, I know that Jamie was with you guys um, on the swing trade. I think that got taken out at break even too. So look, it's sort of really clean with the levels, which is why I don't get I don't get pissed really when I take a break even stop like that because at least the levels remain clean. 1733, 1780, 1790 still resistance. Forget the intraday stuff. Watch the closes. Uh, and on the daily chart, you know we haven't been able to make any progress. This is the reason why I was fading the move. Um, Iman says I'm in short trade for euro. Are we consolidating till FOMSI short? at 118.10. Okay, so you're still in the money, man. Yeah, I wouldn't, look, I'd have it at, at break even, if anything, if you want to still hold on to it. We haven't broken yet. Here's the daily chart. And the reason I wanted to take that yesterday is because of this. Look at the reaction at 1780, um, 1793. Okay, on a closed basis, rock solid. So, you know, momentum is kind of in consolidation as well. Your question, to be quite frank with you, yeah, I think we are, Iman. I think, let's just say this, barring any kind of headline event risk, headline news, tariff data, tariff, uh, you know, skirmish talks or whatever. Yeah, you must be in it from yesterday. I, I, I'm, I'm aware. <laughs> um, I would be surprised if this thing makes a major move ahead of the FOMC. Okay, that being said, resistance is resistance. So for me, you know, I don't want to buy into this. You know, it's the bottom line. Uh, so if anything, for me, it was just a near-term kind of scalp against resistance. Probably should have had, um, you know, a, a, a limit to take a little off at 1733. Maybe got a little overzealous on this one. But um, at the end of the day, the levels remain pretty clean. Okay, until we get sort of a validated close, a break uh, above these regions, you know, I'd be really, I'd be really cautious to start fighting this. The levels are super clean though. 1850, that upper parallel is your first target on the upside. Then you have the 200 day moving average comes in right around 1946. So the ideal play, Eman, for me uh, is maybe if the dollar rips on FOMC, excuse me, the downside break, 1705. Uh, seven, uh, 1670, uh, excuse me, 1660. This is my near-term bullish inval. So both of these are, would be levels uh, if which we get a spike, if we get a drive lower dollar really rallies on the FOMC. Uh, this are, these are two levels I'd like to see sort of offer some exhaustion, possible entries. So for you on the short position, you know, break even stop, or if you want to play a little bit uh, more liberal, you want to put a stop against the high, leave yourself a little more room, okay. Uh, but I wouldn't get too aggressive on it. Wouldn't get too aggressive on it, amen. Uh, if support at 1733, why do you think Jamie put a break-even exit at 1745? Guys, you have to keep in mind, Jamie's and I's strategies are a little bit different in that respect, okay? He's looking at it straight from a structural standpoint. I'm looking much more at the near-term price action. Um, so from his, and he was working, actually, if you guys noticed, on his report, he was working with a slightly different slope. Sometimes we're not, guys, we don't sync up our analysis, and that's the beauty of it. We do that on purpose. Because sometimes he might be on a on a on a on a slope or a gradient that I might not be looking at. Sometimes I might have a slope or gradient that might be a little bit more accurate in near term pr price action. So you guys got to pick and choose. the 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 swing trades are very disciplined. The stops and the limits are very disciplined. The risk rewards are very disciplined. 
So, you know, I don't want to necessarily kind of bring this type of analysis to focus to the swing trades, okay? Um, by the way, I didn't confer with Jamie on that one, so <laughs> that's probably why to answer your question bluntly. Um, but the the level is still pretty is still pretty clear as far as the euro is concerned. Ideal scenario, again, you get the jackknife for a possibility for long off that. If you're looking for near-term price action or a trade on a scalp or something like that, play the range, okay? Don't get too aggressive on it. So, Iman, you know, if this thing were to drive down lower here, maybe you start to see it start to fizzle out, momentum bottoms out. You know, as you head into that parallel, yeah, maybe it's worth taking a little off the table. Okay, you're heading to major event risk, you're heading into the quarterly close, and it's not the time to get super aggressive. Um, so if you want to play within the range, I got no problem with that, but you got to trade against the extreme. So any shorts you take need to be against the weekly high, you need to be comfortable with that, any longs you need to take need to be against the weekly lows. Again, the ideal scenario here is you get some sort of reactionary play off, off the FOMC. Now, if we don't get the downside break, and now again, this is just possibilities for tomorrow, scenarios to look for. If we don't get the downside break tomorrow and the dollar sells off, just rips, um, euro just rips, that is, you know, on the breakout, look for a pullback against that median line. On the drawdown is where the entry would be. Try to get something against the swing low for the continuation to 1850 and 1946. But look, we're working on the assumption that the euro has made a bigger turn in price. Uh, the concern, one of the reasons that I still like the short is because everyone's, was it one of you guys in the webinar in Daily FX yesterday? Someone was saying about the head and shoulders. Ty, I think, was that you? Might have been someone else. Um, I always live by the concept in trading, um, you know, go cautiously with and boldly against. And when you start to see everyone, Ty, if you just look at the Twitterverse, it's like a pollution. Um, in my opinion, but <laughs> there's a lot of people already calling for the head and shoulders, calling 22, you know, that's great and all and dandy, but it doesn't do anything for a near-term trader looking for a position, um, a feasible trade position. So if we get the pullback, I think it's a better scenario. Um, let me take one second, guys, here and just check what the, I have access to client trade sentiment from IG. Let me just see where Euro's at. Right. All right. So you got a 1.3, positive 1.3 traders are uh, still net short. That is a bullish uh, scenario, but you're seeing that net short position really contract. And from that standpoint, it actually gives you a bearish near term scenario. So even from a trader positioning, from how retail traders are into the position, um, you know, you, something to take in mind. Ty says, last year, everybody saw it and it failed. It was textbook. The last two days have reversal down candles. So you're picking up on the same stuff I'm looking at, right, Ty? This is why I was in that short. Uh, I'm actually not opposed to trying it again if we get a decent uh, move here into the U.S. Open. So, um, again, I like trading the U.S. market open. I hate to trade right ahead of uh, the 930 clip, but we'll see what, what, what this offers here. But you, but you see the example of what I'm saying in person, right, Ty? When the masses start to see it, look, it still might pan out, but that's not the time when the market's actually going to move. Remember, markets don't reward the masses. This is, you know, it's just a, a myth. Um, so we have to take it in stride. And um, I do think if we get a decent pullback, I'd like to be on long side of the euro. Till that happens, we need to see a material daily close above 1793 to get this thing going. Uh, until that happens, use some caution. Here's the intraday chart. Just a closer look at it. That's the 60 minute. Technically, you do have divergence on these last two highs. Price action with a higher high and a closed basis. The oscillator with a obvious lower high. Here's the 120. And here's 240. So no change to any levels on Euro dollar. The other one from last night's update was Euro yen. Ty, this is another one. You've got my attention on it. I think this one's better um, in the attempt to 
to fade euro strength. If we get a pop into 33.80, 34.28, these are two levels pretty big if we get up there. Uh, we have former trend line support or slope support for pitchfork that we were in for two years. That pitchfork broke this year. The lower parallel has been resistance ever since. That converges 133.80, 134.28, two levels of interest. Also, given to account, this is the basic 618 retracement of the broader decline from the 2014 highs. Multi-year retracement, 100% extension is obviously the advance just off that low. So if we get a spike into these two regions, I think I'd love to try to short that. On the intraday position, you know, I'm looking for exhaustion right here. The ideal scenario is this thing jackknifes into either the parallel or the lower parallel for the resumption. But um, again, one of those trades where it's just muttering sideways into the weekly open. So you don't have really much to do here. The levels are super clean. I just wanted to highlight last night that near-term adjustment in slope and also this near-term channel. Okay, so I have two touch here, a parallel extending off the highs we made, uh, or I guess that swing high that we made back on the 13th. You saw a perfect clip there last week. Both of those levels converge on that parallel moving into the next day or so. Um, so the levels are pretty clean on Euro Yen. I don't know how to attack it from here, guys, literally. And when markets get like this, this is where you want to have everything mapped out. So when we do finally get a play, you know what we're looking for. Um, so 33, by the way, 33.48, it's just the swing high, okay? I have it as a soft target there. The real major resistance regions I'm looking to fade if we get are these two. Uh, if it breaks the lower parallel, you know, 130.78 is still going to be our bullish inval. That might be the position to get back on the long if we get down there. But this thing is certainly getting wound up for something, Here's the 60 minute. The momentum signature certainly hasn't turned bearish. This is still constructive. In fact, you have a 60 break here on the top side as far as 65 on the pullback. Momentum actually held right around 50, a little dribble below. Uh, but this still seems constructive. Now, Again, I think the event risk we're looking for, guys, this week is what's going to give us the catalyst here. These things are just, you know, I find it very hard to believe. And even if it does break ahead of FOMC, I don't know if I chase it. So just use some caution here. Questions on Euro Yen? Same thing on Euro Yen, actually, with the uh, sentiment, guys. Traders are extremely, actually, not extremely, but they're still net uh, short. Net short positionings are really ramping down. You're seeing a, a large reduction uh, in broader net positioning on the short side for Euro Yen. That's actually um, a bearish development. So another reason that you might be a little concerned for Euro Yen. Okay, Aussie was next on the target here. And I might get really pissed this morning if Aussie turns aggressively higher. Remember the two levels I told you last night, 7238 uh, and 7220, looking for possible long entries off of both those levels. Well, where is my Aussie chart? That's weird. Uh, Okay, um, there's the level. <laughs> when I woke up this morning and I just saw it starting to rip, I was like, yeah, let's see if we get that final drop maybe ahead of the US Open, and here we are. If this thing starts to ramp up, breaks the opening range high, obviously we've missed the, uh, we've missed the long position, but I still think um, both of these are prudent areas to look for possibility. Again, if I miss this one, I miss it, but this is the August low day close. Decent pivot in price any way you slice it, aside from it being not the low day close of the year. There's a new low day close. But support bounce, break, saw acceleration, turned right ahead, break, saw acceleration, tested it as support. There it is again. The ideal scenario was a 38.2 clip of the advance, which came right on slope. Uh, 
Markets don't care what I think. If this rips higher, again, the opening range high converges on that slope parallel. So right here, okay, that is also your opening range high. So in fact, at this point, guys, I'd probably be looking at that level there. Let me get rid of this 100% extension. Uh, 7282, 7285. What's 7285? 7285 is the Friday close on the gap into the weekly open. Uh, we didn't quite fill it. Okay, the high was 7281. So it's a four pip unfilled, uncovered gap, whatever, right? That's the level I would use as the uh, breakout target. And then if that breaks out, you all know who we're looking for there, right? 7327, 7333. The same level we've been talking about all year long. So that's the level to be right there. Near term support is still 7239, uh, 7220 being the target for the long for uh, our bullish inbound, at least for the near term. Now Kiwi's got a similar setup in this, uh, but I thought this one was still the, the cleaner one that we're looking at, just because the broader picture is pretty ridiculous here. Here's the daily chart, right? Uh, raised floor type of deal on the re on the reversal. Back above 2017 open, there's a 100% extension converged on that upper parallel for basic slope. If you take it to a line chart, perfect rejection and pullback. So all things held constant, above 72, I do like Aussie climbing higher. Um, what we were trying to identify last night was entries for the long side. 72.39, 72.20 are both targets that we noted. Um, Let's see if we can't find some material rebound off these levels. Slip that 72.88 target to the weekly opening range high, uh, the Friday close. So 72.88, uh, 72.81 rather, 72.85. Okay, and here's the 240. Okay, any questions on Aussie? Ty says, project to your upper bound, a little cup and handle um, on Aussie, Ty? Or was that for a previous question? Oh, for your end, okay, sorry about that. Um, so that is Aussie. Again, we're not looking for major Aussie data this week, so uh, look for the dollar to really give cues here. The RBNZ, and I guess we'll jump into that next, number five, um, that's what's on tap on Wednesday night after Fed. You do get something from tonight on the uh, New Zealand. Oh, you get trade balance data. Okay, you get trade balance data tonight from New Zealand. Um, but the RBNZ is on tap on Wednesday after the FOMC. Here's uh, Kiwi. So very similar scenario to what we're seeing here in Aussie. Again, this is one where I might, you know, being a little bit too close to the chest, maybe because I've been away for a while. I don't know what it is, maybe a little gun shy, but um, the ideal scenario, which you don't always get in trading, uh, would have been for a drop into this region. Just a perfect, real clean pivot in price, irrespective. It's the August range low there from the 23rd. Pivot break, resistance, 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 break, acceleration, converges on the median line, the 50 line for this current pitchfork, and basic slope support off the lows. So that would have been the ideal clip to get. Um, you still might, I don't know, but the levels are pretty clean here as well. Um, it's really 66.99, 67.15. This is the breakout zone uh, for a larger play to the upside in, in Kiwi. Big, big region. Okay, it's a longer term 618, which was a perfect close low here. Tap, break, acceleration, resistance, that level converges on the upper parallel. Doesn't get much cl cleaner than this. Um, what else can I say on Kiwi?
Yeah, I mean, the, the plan would be if we get the spike to kind of fade that weakness into that region, or if we get a ripperoo, dollar sells off real tough tomorrow, look for a reaction here. If we close above 67.15, uh, I do think you have a major, a more concerted low in place, and we'd look to play a much larger recovery in Kiwi. Um, remember, this thing flirted with disaster. Downside break of a descending slope can spell massive losses. Um, and we recovered from that twice. So wouldn't be too surprised to get a larger recovery there. Dollar weakness would have to start to persist. Um, and certainly the FOMC could give us that kick later today or later this week. Questions on Kiwi. Keep in mind the RBNZ, okay? Tomorrow night after the Fed. So you could get a nice, nice play here. Depending on how the Fed makes this react, uh, the RBNZ might offer a nice play here in Kiwi. All the action will be during the presser to see if Powell respects the yield curve. A hundred percent, Ty. I completely agree with you. Um, the interest rate expectation, whether they hike or not, that's priced in. Markets could give a hoot about that. Um, the only other thing, Ty, that would might move the market ahead of the presser is if the dot plot shows a material shift in the terminal rate. Okay. If that terminal rate starts popping above, remember the mean. Uh, is somewhere in the range of two and three quarters to three and a quarter, okay, a 50 basis point zone. If that starts to move materially higher on the dot plot, even before Powell takes this, the podium, I do think you get some dollar strength. Now, is that the expected uh, release? Again, I'm not an economist, and again, I'm not a fundy guy who's going to sit there and try to tell you what I think Powell's going to say, but the scenarios of which I think markets would rally on the dollar would be... Um, a material shift in that terminal rate. That being said, Ty, 100%. It's all about uh, it's all about the presser and whether what the yield curve will do. Now, interestingly enough, I'm I guarantee you, I assure you, tomorrow someone will ask uh, Powell about you know the possibility of an in inverted yield curve, and it wouldn't be the first time we know his responses, but um, that's also something that could offer or could make markets a little bit more skittish tomorrow. So it's a wait and see game here, guys, but patience pays in this business, and there is certainly a lot of vent risk into a monthly and quarterly close, a good time to keep the powder dry. Uh, Sterling, top performer today, who would have thunk it? So Sterling, we are looking for, on the British pound, um, a new low. Remember what I said to you guys early in the week on the open, here was the Sterling update. Whoops. Here's a sterling update from earlier in the week. Uh, we opened up right above that basic retracement, former swing highs, 30 to 49 to 30, uh, uh, 55 is the note is the six pick range we noted. We said, look, we're opening up at weekly support, right? Um, so maybe you get a little bit of recovery here, but the focus is for a new low, okay? Kind of a boom, boom, boom. Whether it's 2980 or whether it's 2905, both levels of interest for possibility on the long side. Um, bearish invalidations, 3213. We'd have to get back above that basic slope, above the former range highs from that late August run. Uh, a break above that would put us back on resumption, right? So we're getting the onset of that. Here's what the intraday chart looked like on the Sunday open. Here's what it looks like now. Okay, this is the 120-minute chart. I think I highlighted the 240, but anyway, uh, there's the push higher. Again, this is your bearish invalidation on this. If it's just a near-term correction, the 100% extension still takes into 32, which is our bearish inval. So here's the thing. Um, if we get the drive higher, right now, I still do think you have a risk for a drive into this region, but this might be actually a decent fade, decent opportunity to get short, uh, while noting that if we do get into 29.80 or specifically 29.05, I'd be looking to buy that. But that would be the play, I think, for Sterling. And I think this might actually be a decent one for FOMC. Um, UK headlines are going to continue to circulate. Um, whether, you know, there's more, there's more interest starting to, 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 to be fueled here with the Brexit um, details. So if we do get sort of recovery towards 32, look for stronger resistance there. Guys, that's my favorite play. Remember, I, I highlight these anytime I see them. 618 retracement off the low, 100% extension off the or 618 retracement excuse me, off the high, 100% extension off the low. These convergences, when they're dead on like that, tend to be golden. 
Okay, now it is sterling. It's a notorious uh, uh, bastard of such as it comes to uh, overthrows and uh, false breaks. But you know, this is a region of which I'd be definitely looking with great intent for possibility uh, of of a short type of play. Again, drive down 29.80, 29.05 areas of interest for possible entry in the long side. A breach above 33. Okay, the June open was 32.90, but 33 would open up 33.60 as soft target. 34 converges on the upper slopes, both on the down slope and the current operative upslope. Okay, interestingly enough, does this match up? No, not bad. So we take the same slope, attach the low for the week, boom. Same gradient being respected here. So it puts the immediate front again, one touch, two touch, right in that confluence region. Ty says, uh, checkers is dead. The new plan is real Brexit. That is the rally reason May is losing it. It could be, Ty. I don't know if it was a SB client, but I did have a client write me a huge um, sort of his take on, are you in the room um, on the Brexit? It's really interesting because when you talk to guys on the ground in the UK, um, it's it's very, what's the word, linear. It's one way or another. They're either uh, the younger youth, uh, which was against Brexit and kind of wants to keep open borders, or not, not say open borders, but wants to keep a little bit more of a, uh, a fluidity or easy transactions with back and forth the rest of Europe. And then you have the Brexiteers who are actually looking for Brexit saying that this is not true Brexit. Uh, so it seems like they're kind of folding down on both sides. Look, I don't really know the interior of the, of the, of the or the you know, details of the politics, but from a sterling standpoint, I wouldn't be surprised, uh, Ty, even despite that, if you do see sort of a sell off um, and move lower. Remember, the catalyst that starts the move doesn't necessarily need to be the catalyst that keeps the move going. Do you understand what I mean? So the reversal was huge. You had a massive market day where you came off of confluence resistance, had a massive drawdown, you know, a trade like that. You know, if you look at Sterling, even on the weekly standpoint, um, you know, weekly doji last week, right off that high. Ugh. You got it. He says, that's why we play the lines rather than the news. Amen, Ty. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> So yeah, I think Sterling will be a very, I'll be watching this one super close since the close of the week. Um, if you get a decent breakdown, you know, into um, the close of the month, here's your monthly open. You know what I mean? There's so many clean reasons to try to get long on a larger recovery or a larger breakdown rather than the near term for the Sterling. But uh, still think the immediate risk may be for 32 and then sort of a slide lower. That is cable. Any questions on the British pound? That is number six. Is best performer versus the US dollar um, to open up the US trade session. All right. Last but not least on my list is gold. Um, not much to update you guys on, but I think gold's going to be pretty big this uh, this week. So the gold chart that we highlighted uh, into the Sunday open, basically looking for this consolidation. We're still well within the confines of that consolidation. We're just looking to see that break at some point. One thing to note, the September monthly opening range is still intact. Okay, you're cutting the September close in just three days. Um, the break of this range or the break of this formation should be a rather clear cut um, and conviction move. Okay, so remember resistance 1215, the breakout zone is 1221. Uh, support into basic slope off of that uh, was that late August slide there. Okay, more importantly 1185 bullish inval for the broader uptrend in gold is still right down here. Weekly chart shows 1171 guys, but 1175 is what I have. 1174. Break below that, sayonara. There's nothing to do with gold. Um, seasonals are pretty strong for gold in September. I was really expecting to see this thing finally show a little bit more of a resumptive move. 
Uh, and I think we get it. So if you're looking for entries, you want to get in long at the range lows against that trend line, ideally as close as you can against 1185. Um, top side targets 1215, 1220, 1221. That's where I'd kind of book the majority and leave a little on if you think you're going to get the break. But this is the level of which if we see the breach, um, I don't think there's any arguing that that was a way more important low in August. Okay. So... And remember, this is just a 618, by the way, of the advance off the yearly low. The 100 is 11, 1240. So even if you were going to get two equal legs, that still leaves you another $40 to the upside. So I'm a bull on, on gold long term. How you play it, you know, it'd have to be as close as you can against 1285. Or if we get the breach above 1220, you buy pullbacks from there. Questions on gold? Okay, sorry about that. Uh, record low weekly and monthly vols in what? In gold? Yeah, so gold has been one where, uh, let me take a look at what uh, IG sentiment looks like. Okay, their trading by sentiment is neutral, but they still have um, a long to short ratio of 5.7, 85% of client net positioning. Um, is on the long side. Now that doesn't speak to volume, Ty, but just to show you where they're where they're um, where they're positioned. That's not necessarily positive for our outlook, but we will see. All right, that is number seven, guys. If there are any other questions, trade setups you want to look at, feel free to throw them on the message board uh, at this time. Again, a quick reminder, we won't have a session tomorrow, but we'll be back on Thursday on the heels of the FOMC. So we'll take a look at the aftermath. Uh, a quick review again of all the dollar crosses, guys. Euro, um, you, know, the, you know the game plan here. Bullish in still uh, 1660, still looking for uh, a higher move long term there. Sterling's really clean. Um, we just went over that. Dollar yen, we didn't talk about today, but this is a new uh, quick outlook for uh, the dollar yen. Last dollar yen update was okay. It doesn't look like uh was last week. Here's the dollar yen from last week. Okay, so here's that key resistance region. Remember, we pushed right through it and we closed the week in that zone. Here's the weekly open. That zone now defined basically by the weekly weekly opening range lows. So this is the break that would put us on the shift to the move lower. Near-term resistance, I wouldn't short from here, but near-term resistance on a level tomorrow, uh, this region right here, those swing for, former swing highs, 618 retracement, that's 1327, okay? Might be a decent area to see this thing, see some exhaustion. Here's the daily chart, 1327 uh, also converges not too far off from the median line uh, that we've been following off the yearly low. OK, uh, you might have seen yesterday on daily effects, guys, I did publish the weekly chart for dollar yen. Looks like this. Absolutely magnificent. For a trade that's so ugly and typically so repulsive in its technicals, um, here's the weekly chart. Sometimes when you get a little confused or a little bit thrown off uh, what near term price action is saying, these charts can be the biggest guidance. And why? Because you take a step back and it's as sub objective as a look as possible. So many things to look at here. Basics, 618 retracement of a two-year range. Cool. Yearly open, 1265. Cool. 200-week moving average, converging right on that same level. Cool. The yearly opening range highs. Doesn't get more stacked up than that. 
So guys, last time we entered this region, I remember we talked about it here on SB. We were heading right here, and we highlighted those same those same four um, uh, factors that we just that we just talked about: the yearly open, 50, uh, 200 week moving average, 618 retracement, and the yearly opening range highs. Look what we did. Not saying this is necessarily going to happen again, but it just goes to show you that if you do breach 1327. The implications are certainly for much stronger price action to the upside. Okay, so Marco says there is a also a bit of divergence with RSI. Um, I uh, wouldn't necessarily call it divergence yet uh, because we haven't closed this. I guess today if we pull back, um, that would be divergence. So if we could pull could pull back and close above. Uh, 12, what was the close here? 1233, um, that would be divergence, but easier way to do this is just always bring up a line chart like this and look. Okay, so this high, you know, it looks like a higher high here and it looks like a slightly higher high here. Uh, if we settle below this resistance region and the, the marker is much lower, as long as it's higher than this, that would be divergence, but that's a tough call. That's a tough call. And we can't make any uh, assumptions on, Marco, you read my mind. Yeah, you can't make any assumptions on this till the end of the week anyway, right? Can we have the daily and hourly, please, on dollar yen? Sure can. Uh, so this is the weekly. Whoa. Weekly. Uh, daily chart looks like this. I don't have that zone uh, highlighted. So this zone that you're looking at right here between 1265 and 1327, that's this zone right here on the daily chart. 1265 yearly open, 12, 1327. So that's this whole zone right here. Okay, you can probably dump that 100%. You don't need that. It's your week, uh, monthly opening range highs. Okay, feel free guys to take a snapshot of the chart. Remember, you can always take a snapshot by that button on your go-to screen. So feel free to do that. Um, and what did you, do you want the intraday? Sure. So guys, one thing I wanna highlight, I don't think I have it, I don't know if I have it noted on the report, I'll look in a moment, is the, uh, interestingly enough, the high day close for the year is actually in January. This was not the yearly high, this was the yearly high. Uh, and that high day close uh, gives you 1308, which is pretty close here. So why don't, why don't we do this? Okay, there's your kind of key region right there uh, to watch 1308, 1327, 20 pip range of resistance. Okay, and I work with stochastics and divergence there was clearer. Marco, on this, gotcha. On the intraday or the daily? Weekly, gotcha. Uh, here's the intraday chart, uh, Ty. Here's the uh, 240 minute. This is the new retracement that I, uh, new sort of formation, just this basic swing low, swing low, swing low. Parallel of that extend off that high converges on that same spot, 1327, same median line that we're looking at in the daily chart, a real, real big spot. Uh, 1243 into 1265, that was the zone that we talked about into the start of, uh, or last week. Um, 1245 is now the weekly open, right? The weekly open was exactly 1240, 1241. So break below that and you're looking for just a basic pullback in price. Take a quick retracement of that level. If we were to get that, forget that two three six. Forget the six one eight. If you don't need the August open and. Wouldn't worry about that.
So those are the levels I'd be looking at in the breakdown scenario, sub 1, 1240. Okay. 1215 would just be a soft target, former swing highs. More importantly, 1175, big one's going to be 1138 if you do get the move lower. All right. Does that help, Ty? You got it? And that is dollar yen. Uh, definitely a mover on FOMC. Uh, you definitely want to watch this one with great intent tomorrow. Okay, um, if there are no other questions or trade setups, um, we'll end it there. Uh, a quick look, guys, at um, real quick at Swissy. Just something I've been watching. Um, you know where we turned from last week. This break here, I thought this was going to go straight down to that 618 to give us at least a tag of 9525. Here's the turn. So look, we're looking for the uh, basic parallel for that formation. This is off the highs that we made back in May and specifically in July. Uh, I'm looking for a break above that. Uh, to suggest again that we have a more concerted low in place. Wouldn't be too surprised to see this thing again start to pull back a little bit before we move higher, but uh, certainly starts to look like we're heading into a support structure on the daily chart. You know, we haven't, this is what I'll say on the daily chart. Monthly open, around 96, 94, just below 97. Major resistance breakout zone, 97.43. It's basically the early open and a 38.2 of the entire yearly range. So nothing I'm actually operating on, but this one is one where you're seeing way more cleaner divergence, right? You bring it into a line chart here, lower low in price, lower low in price, lower low in price, a series of higher lows in the oscillator, both one below in the extremes and one above, uh, tends to be a decent signal. So I think, again, the risk for dollar strength, if we are going to see it, this is the pair I think would get the biggest, one of the biggest kicks to the upside. Um, but nothing I'm currently operating on, something to keep an eye on. All right, guys, wrap it up there. Um, good luck trading into FOMC. Keep it light. Again, keep in mind the environment that we're trading in with the quarterly uh, close in the next couple of days. Hopefully, I'm a little more back on track, guys. As we get back into Thursday, I'm still getting back into the swing of things. So um, I will see you Thursday morning. Till then, best of luck trading, guys. Cheers. Iman, thank you. Take care.